Hello, I'm High Hill Knight. Welcome to my channel. This is my miniature review of Men in Black International. It's the fourth movie in the Men in Black franchise. It's not a reboot. It's not a retcon. It is a sequel, but it has nothing to do with the adventures of Agents J and K. It's just introducing new characters and a new location, expanding the uh, mythology of the Men in Black franchise. So in this movie, uh, back in the 90s, a little girl named Molly witnessed her parents getting neuralized by the Men in Black agents. That's when the Men in Black find humans that have encountered aliens and wipe their memory of those experiences. Molly didn't get a mind wipe, so she spent the next 20 so years uh, learning as much as she can about aliens and technology and rumors and things like that so that she will hopefully uh, be recruited by the Men in Black. And eventually she winds up becoming a probationary agent Molly is renamed Agent M, and her first assignment, uh, she's uh, sent to London to help Agent H, who's a very seasoned veteran, but a bit of a goofball, uh, solve the latest case, latest problem. You know, the men are back. They protect the Earth from the scum of the universe, so they got to uh, stop the latest monster or alien that wants to take over the world or destroy the world or uh, conquer the universe or what have you. <laughs> so while this movie was fine, there wasn't really anything that I liked about this movie. I mean, I didn't hate it, but there's only one thing that stood out that I liked, and that was the character Pawnee, to my surprise. Pawnee is this little alien whose clan gets uh, killed by the villains, so to give his life purpose, he pledges his loyalty to Agent M to protect her. Uh, so, you know, on the one hand, I was thinking, okay, this is probably just going to be a you know, throwaway character that uh, I'm not going to care about, but I wind up caring about him because... He saves the movie for me, at least. Uh, before he's introduced, uh, the movie was just, eh, it's okay. It's not great. It's not awful. It's just okay. But when he's introduced, he gets to play off of Ages H and Ages M, and that just builds a dynamic, and now the movie starts feeling like a uh, mint in black film. Because up to then, uh, the movie started feeling like a Marvel movie spinoff <laughs> with Agents uh, M and Agents H being played by Tessa Thompson and uh, Chris Helmsworth. Uh, I've already seen those actors in the MCU movies. I've already seen them playing off each other. I've already bickering amongst each other. I've already seen them doing finding aliens with each other. So it's like, you know, which Pawnee is brought into the story. Now we're starting to feel like a Men in Black movie as opposed to something that uh, the MCU sort of just toss out there for fun. <laughs> but there are plenty of things that I was frustrated about or didn't like. For one thing, uh, the agents spend a significant amount of time out of their men in black uniforms. And for the story, it does make sense. But, you know, they're the men in black. I want to see the men in black wearing their black suits. <laughs> Another problem is that the, um, the aliens that are introduced, they're scary and they're intense and they're creepy and the uh, effects are wonderful, but they're forgettable. They have no personalities, they have no names, you're looking about them, they're just these creepy, evil things that you gotta shoot up and blast. And, uh, you know, the villains of the other uh, movies aren't necessarily spectacular or wonderful, but at least they're characters. These are just henchmen being henchmen stuff, and that was just really frustrating. And finally, this movie doesn't seem to have a signature song. Like, when the credits roll, I was waiting for the song to come up, whatever that song would be, and it's like, there's no song, nothing. It's just the uh, generic, uh, you know, background sound music. Like, what, what, what? You know, in the first two movies, you had uh, Will Smith doing the song. In the third movie, you had Pitbull doing the song. I'm not a fan of Pit Pitbull, but at least, you know, it's there. And in this movie, there's no song, which makes no sense. This is owned by Sony. Sony's a parent company. I know Sony has some access to some type of musical acts. They can afford to hire a musical act. So it doesn't make any sense that there's no uh, specialty song for this film. Especially since uh, Fergie's uh, London Bridge, I don't. that was used in the trailers and the promos, but I don't think it's in the film at all anywhere, so it's just frustrating that you uh, have elements from a trailer that you're looking forward to see, and it doesn't happen in the film, so that really, really frustrated me. So, yeah, I am a fan of the Men in Black franchise. I love the other movies. I love the animated uh, uh, TV show. I like the Ride of Universal, so I do love the Men in Black concept, but this movie, it was just... Eh, check it out on streaming if you want. I recommend it, but you know, don't make any effort to see this movie. It's not really worth the effort, but it's not awful. Just you know, wait till you see it for free. <laughs> All right, so those are my thoughts on Ben and Black International. I would love to know what you thought of the movie. Be sure to share whatever comments you like. 
in the comment section. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or dislike, share, and subscribe. Once again, I'm High Hill Knight. Thank you for watching. And remember, well, on second thought, maybe you shouldn't remember.